Hello crafty peeps. I am here to do my first layout of 2018 share for the Wild Hair Kit Club. And I settled on using this oversized photo of my girls. Um, I printed it at 8 by 12. I sized it in Lightroom. Printed it on my Canon Pixma Pro 100. And I cut it on my Caterpillar Pro. So this printed originally at, it was a canvas of 13 by 19. And it is now 8 by 12. I think it's a little bit longer. I can uh, wiggle it around and then cut it when I need to exactly to size. I did want to show you a couple of things very quickly. I organized my tabletop quite a bit. So I went um, to Target specifically looking for something that would hold my kind of my current kit or things that I want to be working on currently for you know any particular month and I'll put this to the side here I found this I think other people have used it so it is a desk organizer I'm looking at the dimensions that's why I'm flipping it over the dimensions are 13 and 5 eighths inches long by 5 inches wide by 6 inches high <clears throat> and as you can see you can very easily fit 12 by 12 paper in it I have put in here my wild hair kit papers uh, both the 12 by 12 and the 6 by 6 and I will have a link down below to um, the unboxing video for this kit that I'm using for January. I put some white cardstock in here, two different thicknesses because um, I'm thinking I might use some mixed media, so I want to use the thicker one. And I just put a piece of cardboard, <clears throat> cardboard, chipboard, I think it's chipboard, that, you know, I have a whole store of chipboard from, I've collected for probably the last 10 years um, that have come in kits and, um, online orders and whatnot. So I just put one of those just to keep it from flopping over. And then I'll uh, put this like this. I need to be able to see, but I want you to see as well. Uh, it comes with one large, so this would fit 12 by 12, 12 inches across in here fine. I think this one is more like maybe eight, and this one's probably four. <clears throat> I'm not quite four because yeah so it doesn't quite fit four on this side but it fits three inch and um, a little less than four in here and so this was probably a little more than eight yeah these compartments and so um, I put in my ephemera for the, well my stickers for the wild hair kits and um, I I am determined to use my Allie Edwards story kits. So I've been subbing Allie Edwards kits for just a little over a year actually. I think I started in November 2016 and I've also just accumulated kits as they went on sale or I found them on eBay that sort of thing. And I I've, I've used some of the kits but not all of them and I that needs to change. So I want to at least do one, one project, one layout a month with my Allie Edwards kit. So I put this in, put it in here as well. And I've also already saw something that I think I want to use on the layout I'm about to make. Um, so these are all Allie Edwards and this is all Allie Edwards. And then I have my sticker sheet that goes with this kit. And then the smaller things, I'm just gonna put this away. I'm already in love with this little holder. The smaller things I put in these little trays. So I have always loved writing on things. Like I have so much paper, scrapbooking paper that has writing on it, you wouldn't believe. <laughs> and I've recently discovered the uh, Ray Dunn uh, artist she's an artist who does pottery or dishes 
and um, I went on eBay and I bought a few things. So these two here are, I've seen these in a mug version, but they are pencil holders. So I got to the set and I put um, sort of like the more utilitarian, um, the more utilitarian <clears throat> writing utensils, pencils, pens, just pencils and markers and pens. On the one that says write, and on the one that says create, I put more of the ones that I use turn to for scrapbooking. For um, the white pens, I use gray quite a bit, and um, the Ali Edwards precision pens and the um, I can't remember what these are called slick writer that's it slick writer sorry I, I I know my voice is still not quite hundred percent still working on that um and any any other pens that I use for specifically just to write on a scrapbook page so anyway I got both the set and then what I'm doing is just going ahead and laying them flat on my desk because I know that some pens definitely are affected by gravity. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave them like this, but they're going to be facing me. So to the camera at the moment, they go like this and they're right up against the back of my desk. And um, I will have to be doing an updated room tour soon. I've just been sick and there's been the holidays. I'm still behind on everything. <clears throat> but I will actually like do a tour of the desk. And then um, I got these on eBay. I know they sell them at like TJ Maxx because that's the kind of tag that was on them. It just seems like that. And I, when I was looking for Ray Dunn, there's tons on eBay, but I, I know that they sell them based on comments and stuff at places like TJ Maxx, possibly Ross. I'm not sure about that one. So this I got as a set. And um, I just looked. They have tons and tons of different options. Just, just got great stuff. And these just came together in a listing on eBay and it, they just fit what I wanted perfectly. So I'm putting <clears throat> my racers and my little, this is my Project Life roller date stamp that I turn to the most. And I have my roller date stamps all in a couple bins. I still have to organize them into something better, but I, I was tired of just trying to find that particular one. So I'm keeping that one in here and some adhesives. Oh, and whiteout, because I actually do use whiteout on layouts sometimes. So I'm just keeping a few adhesives here. It might change over time. And I just grabbed this one from um, Amazon. I haven't used this yet, so I'm looking forward to using this based on Jennifer McGuire's, my favorite things, um, her recommendations for this year. So that's, I'm just keeping some things in here that were all in here. So this is just a little mug that I handmade, uh, hand painted, and uh, all this was in here, but then it's hard to rummage through. So this is just you holding more adhesives. And this is just so I can have things on hand. I have more of all this in my drawers themselves. And, um, one last thing I'll show you before I get to the actual layout. <clears throat> I got this, it's called a Puda. Um, it's a felt, it's a little holder felt from Ikea. I fell in love with it when I saw someone using it for holding their December daily. I never got around to December daily because I was so sick, I just couldn't even. So I have two of these. One still packed away, but I decided to go ahead and put one on the corner of my desk to hold these few things that have just been sitting on the corner of my desk, but they sort of can flop over too easily. So now I've got them sort of more corralled on here. And these are things I turn to often. So I might put a few more things in here as 
time goes by. Now, did I have it? Yeah, I think I had it like this. But it's resting up against the wall. So this will just help keep them corral. All right. Now, oh, so um, in these little containers, I put some the uh, smaller stuff from my kit. So these words and flare. twine and these little acrylic things and I have an extra one because this month we got petite kits and I'm sure as I scrap I will use all three awesome okay so on to the layout I I am doing the sketch challenge for January this is the sketch that uh, society member Claire came up with. Here, I'll pull it up a little bit higher. And um, I'm altering mine a little bit in that instead of I, I, I'm assuming this is where your photo would live, but I wasn't 100% sure. Anyways, I'm actually doing a photo all the way across and then I'll use the elements. Some of these elements are gonna go across on top of my layout so I've put you guys on fast forward and voiceover so that things won't be too slow I know this video is quite a bit longer than um, I try to make the process videos because I had the section in front that you just saw and then there'll be a little spot later on that um, I take some time normal speed to show you a little tip I found um little hack scrapbooking hack so here I'm just auditioning things and the sketch had that little kind of zigzag at the bottom and some text at the bottom so I wanted to use these writing strips and when I cut them off I labeled my papers so that I wouldn't get confused which one's which and um uh, so I know I was going to switch the title from the, the sketch because I knew the title wouldn't fit. And then here I was pulling out uh, one of the stamps to see there's supposed to be text down there. I thought, well, maybe I can stamp the sen some text over and over again across the photo, but it wasn't going to stand up. So I gave up on that. When I got, when I saw that I had some twine, I wanted to do something a little different and based on the colors and sort of like, it feels very girly kit, I want to say, because of all the pink, I thought maybe I should make a little tassel and I've never made a tassel before. So I just, you know, just give it a try. I, I used just regular thread here just to do a quick tie down. And then, um, you know, that this wasn't long or hard. It just took some bravery to commit to just cutting up all that twine. I have more, of course, but this is what came in the kit. And, um, you know, I was trying to see where I would want to put that and looking at the different papers. Now, I, I, I wanted to use this, but I was just too busy. And... Then I put this pink paper down and I loved immediately how it made everything pop and I liked that it's words. So I went off to cut and I went on to my, my Caterpillar Pro because these are the long pieces of paper so I didn't do it at my desk. So I went back and forth and I just cut the little triangle piece at the bottom to match the sketch and a couple of long strips to um, also match the sketch and then I, I echoed that above. Uh, some pieces are uh, just straight strips and that one on top I cut at an angle just to mimic the the bottom corner. Here I was just uh, fiddling with getting them uh, somewhat straight. I wasn't too concerned about it but you know I, I, I didn't want it to look too wonky. And then I place this down and I am about to go off to sew some um, 
stitching on these. I really like to do stitching lately on just about everything. <laughs> just a final little fiddling with this and then we are off. Here I'm back and uh, I did some straight stitching. I wasn't concerned about keeping it too straight but I also did the zigzag stitching because the layout ha uh, the sketch had some zigzag at the bottom. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to do it right at the bottom, but I'll, I'll do some stitching with it. And um, I got that really fuzzy ribbon to see because the, the, the tassel needed more around that, you know, to bundle it up. That fuzzy ribbon just wasn't going to work. So I went and got some embroidery thread that matched the color of that dark green paper. It has little leaves on it. I don't know if you can tell right there. The unboxing video, you can tell in there. I'll, I'll put the link to that in my notes. And uh, just ruffling it up. Another thing I love to do quite a bit lately. It just adds such nice texture. Now, if anyone has a good tip for ruffling paper without having to use your nails, please, please, please let me know because, you know, here I try the the scissors and I can never, it, it just doesn't, maybe it's this particular scissors. Uh, I should try some other ones, but it never works. So I, I go back to my fingers and back and forth, back and forth. It drives me kind of nuts that I wish I could just use something else to do it much faster. And without messing up my nails. So uh, opening up the Ali Edwards stuff, I hadn't done that yet, just to see what I would like. And I kind of actually like that, but the green does not match the other green. So that was a bummer. And, uh, you know, try the tassel here. I think I just wasn't happy with how that was. I think I'm going to have to just put even more around there. I wasn't happy with that. And seeing if any of the, I, I really like that for the love of rectangle. I think that fits the space really well, that stamp. So I will be using that and trying some other things around. Go back to the tassel. I just felt like I tried it there and it actually kind of looks okay there. But I felt like nowhere where I tried it was it going to be, it, it wasn't fitting the space. Like the Stay Wild was big already. And also I wasn't sure where I could ground it. And then I was trying to think of an idea here of having these acrylics sort of bursting out from the title, but I don't think that was enough of them. They're not long enough kind of like to simulate like little burst lines. And um, they just didn't fit that space either. So I just kept moving things around. Finally, I decided, you know what, I've got to move forward without fiddling so much. So, uh, I did like the butterflies, and they sort of symbolize freedom, and my kids were here laughing a while abandoned as they were spinning, so I'm going to use the butterflies. Tried this little idea with the gems put together, but they weren't going to stand out too well with them just clustered together. There I am looking to see if I can ground that. Oh, it looks look okay there, but I don't know. Now I know I want to use these, the bicycles for sure, because my kids would, we would all bike to that park quite often. And um, and then when my husband would take them by themselves, they, they would all bike over. So the bikes definitely make it. One more try with all these and I like the gems uh, against the white so I decide that they're gonna flank my journaling because there's supposed to be some text down there so I um, I'm not sure what I'm doing here oh yeah so I'm just putting everything on wax paper because I was sort of just kind of lightly laying them on the layout itself and I, I knew I was tempting fate there that it would have to stick and I'd have to unstick it again 
it would stick down too hard and I'd have to unstick them. So <clears throat> here I go with the journaling and I really should maybe do the journaling and walk away and then come back with the journaling. I just wanted to get it over with. And uh, I just wrote down that you guys really love Spinny Park and having your dad take you there and spin you around or something like that. And it was until like a couple days later I thought, oh, I could have done so much better with that journaling. But it is what it is. And then, uh, so the idea I had with these two little gems, I'm calling them gems, uh, the little acrylic pieces is to sort of pointing them towards flanking and pointing towards the journaling. And then I thought, oh, they need something to spruce them up. So I made these two little, I don't know, triangle brackets. That's the word brackets. And immediately after I made them with the pen, I thought, oh, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. But I stuck them down and then, you know, I decided, well, I could just stitch on them, but I don't do it right away there because I was already kind of getting tired and I wanted to sort out some other things first. So I go off. Well, here I am doing a, a little bit more just testing things out and decide on the butterflies for sure. So I put them down. And then um, the other clusters of flowers just didn't really go with the flower paper I'd already used. So they, they're really much more vibrant and I, I wasn't too keen on them. So I decide that my desk is too cluttered and I just tidy it up a little bit. Then I go off and get my Misty because I am going to definitely stamp, use that stamp there. Now, it, it was sticking to the photo a bit, which happens a lot. You know, that can happen. And um, so I, I made sure I put all my magnets down to keep this from moving. I even took the magnets that I usually keep on the smaller Misty. And I wish I had sort of primed the... The stamp, I know some people talk about stamping it on something else like uh, the watermark kind of ink. And uh, I hadn't done that. So it was sticking and like the my stays on pads are really dry. I really need to get refills for that. So it took a few tries to, to get the stamp to go all the way. And then he, I'm going to end up having to kind of color over the that little line later on. So here I am and I decide I'm gonna write for the love of, I'm gonna write Spinny Park on there because that's what the kids used to call that park. I don't remember what the name was. And immediately I screw it up. I thought that's too much to write up of the line. So I was gonna just write park on the line and then skinny right above and I ended up writing skinny on the line and then it, there was no place to put park except below and I immediately hated it. I wasn't too keen on my journaling, is messy, what I said and then this and I was I was very irritated by this point and it was really late at night and I decided to my um, the die cut that I used for the title is just cardstock and I decided it needed more dimension so here I am putting meticulously putting some foam on it and I was irritated by this point I'm like I'm just gonna finish this and go to bed but it takes me a while now this is the stamping up dimensionals and I really like the little the little hexagons and the dimension of it isn't super thick so you can double it up or just leave it as is I left it as is and then I pull apart the edges and just sort of cut it small um, to thinner I should have just gotten fun foam and just it, put adhesive on one side and then just cut thin strips and put it on the back here because this took a while maybe next time I wouldn't even put the foam on I don't know so I am about to get off the voiceover back on live um, so that you can see this hack I discovered 
Hi guys, I'm back. I had to go sleep on this layout, um, which often happens often for me. I find it better to just come back and look at it, things with fresh eyes. And um, I was disappointed when I wrote out the words Spinny Park here. Very tiny. I don't like my writing. Um, and I messed up because I was supposed to put it above the line. Although I don't know if it'll fit above the line with two words. But anyways, I didn't like that. And I was trying to think of, well, should I just like put some washi tape on it or something like that? And then as soon as I had done these lines here, I immediately didn't like them. And I thought, okay, I got to do something about that. And I, uh, what popped in my mind was to embroider the line with some thread to bring some of this dark into this little area and that's fine but I was just too tired last night so anyways before I start that though I did a test so I got the um, piece that I cut my photo out of this is just the other part of the 13 by 19 sheet of <clears throat> Canon luster paper and I used it on my Canon Pro 100 which is wide wide format printer I just did a test real quick and I put both this date I stamped it stays on and then I did a couple of lines with the same marker that I wrote that on and that is the Slick Rider pen um, American Crafts makes this it's called Slick Rider I happen to have the Ali Edwards branded one because it's so pretty with the <laughs> the orange and white um, and I love Allie Edwards products so I did a test I tried undo which I keep on hand and I have to order more because inevitably I have to unstick something for my layout all the time I don't think I've ever made a layout where I didn't have to unstick something <laughs> so I have undo on hand and I tried alcohol and I tried uh, acetone nail polish remover with actual acetone I was worried I was trying to see would it affect the actual photo would it affect the paper like would it start peeling up and would it actually erase this marker and the winner is alcohol so this was a quick test at first um, and I believe okay so this is the acetone and then this right here you can kind of see it starts fading is the alcohol so I wrote a line here and here and I'll pull it up hopefully you can see and it erased most of it and so I was trying to see if it would also pick up the background and it doesn't pick it up too much at all I mean, this is gonna be weird but here are my little used q-tips and there's a little bit of green but mostly it was just the line and um I'll have to do a test with this on like a, a photo where the mistake is on like a critical portion of, like maybe someone's face to see if it would actually work but for this where it's a background and it happens to be a blurred background because my kids were spinning and my husband took the picture and it just he focused just right on with uh, DSLR on them. So the background's all streaky anyway. And I did it on this portion that's very light and it has like this lavender kind of streak, which is what the ink kind of turns into. So I think it'll be perfect for here. So I am going to try to lift those words. Oh, also, I stamped the stays on and it didn't affect the stays on at all. So. Wish me luck. I put you back on voiceover so I could speed things up. The erasing process took about eight minutes. And I wasn't really scrubbing at it or anything. I was letting the alcohol just saturate the area and then just brushing the Q-tips along there uh, over it and just switching out the q-tip when it was getting too black and it didn't affect the stays on stamped image at all yeah i i was worried that it would um create some white areas and it does look slightly wider than it was 
but um, that's not going to be a problem. I was going to quickly write the the spinny park on there and I thought let me practice this. I want to be able to fit it in and so I was going to have to do it skinnier and I've actually been attracted to a skinny taller font lately so just had a practice there and it comes out pretty good. Still not thrilled with my writing my my penmanship but it's pretty good and because I was worried about it looking too white in that one spot I just put one of the stickers these clear stickers from the Ali Edwards kit on there and I really love how it turned out it was totally worth doing the um, erasing it with the alcohol I'm so happy that turned out really well especially since it was a a bigger photo that I couldn't exactly just swap out since everything was stitched down and all that. I'm so happy I discovered that little tip because now if I have any problems in the future I know what to do. And um, I also sped up the stitching here which wasn't very much stitching at all but it's nice to just have it go by so fast. If only in real life stitching was so fast. I've done quite a bit of embroidering and quilting and it takes a long time. So I go back to the puffy sticker sheet and pick out some of the little cute flowers using them sort of like enamel dots. I I think I, I, I kind of wanted to use that slightly bigger set of flowers down there but it just the color was off. It was more red and I don't really have red on the layout. So instead I grabbed another Becky Higgins roller stamp that I have and this one has some little phrases on the side. So I put the picked the one that says good times, added some more little flowers. I felt like the that Pink would have been better size-wise in that one spot, but I really wanted the pink on the bottom and the aqua on the top. And um, just added, just drew some little hearts to echo the hearts on top. And here we have some close-ups. And there's a fun stitching, but look how great that came out. You can't really tell I had some permanent ink that I used alcohol on and erased at all. I'm so happy with how that turned out. Here are some stills. I hope that you have enjoyed this process video. I hope that you liked seeing the things that I'm organizing on my desk and that this tip for using alcohol to erase the slick writer on photos comes in handy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you here next time.